Okay, let me start the uh, uh, thing for uh, Facebook so that the people at Facebook can watch us. And uh, I think we are now going. We're on with Facebook. I think uh, that's uh, it so far. And uh, so far we have uh, how many people waiting in our uh, about six people waiting to get on here. Uh, I'm sure that will improve as we go on. But let's admit all the people. We have seven, uh, eight people now. I think that's including me. So let's uh, start bringing some of these people in. There they are. There's Marjorie and there's uh, Charlene. There's our good friend, uh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, of course, Len LaFrisco, Andrew Deutsch, Francine Witt, and uh, Paul Levin is trying to get on. And of course, the voices launched a thousand ships. <laughs> yes, the one that's of that's right. Edward Berger. Was that with a P or a T? <laughs> <laughs> Edward Berger. Say that. That's, that's right. No, I meant the I word is, is invigorated today. That's right. It's always usually it's, that's right. <laughs> today it's kind of that's right. That's right. Okay. There we go. Are you tired of doing that? No, I mean, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure, you know, we are, aren't imposing upon you. No. You know. Uh, but uh, uh, here's our uh, initial panel, uh, and I'm sure we will get more people as the hour goes on. Hello to Marjorie. Hello. Yes, hello to Charlene oh. and Charlie, and I, I mentioned everybody anyway. Hello, Andrew. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You're actually in a real office today. You're not in a, uh, a, a virtual set, are you? Yeah, this is a my, one of my one of my offices out in beautiful Oberlin, Ohio. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Where do you usually call us from? Uh, the other side of the city. The it's other side. I live. I live on the east side of town, and this is far west. Oh, so you live in Oberlin? No, 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 no. I live. I live in an area, um, kind of near Chagrin Falls. Uh, Michigan Falls. Chagrin Falls. Chagrin. Chagrin Falls. Chagrin Falls. Chagrin. C H A G R N. Yeah. I, mean, like, I, I want to ask I'm you a question chagrin? about that, Andrew. Can I ask you a question about that? Because is it Chagrin Falls or is it Chagrin Falls? It's Chagrin Falls. Yeah, because I've heard it pronounced. I mean, you know, Ohio well, pronounced things very right? strange. Well, I can't help it if you talk to stupid people, but smart people know it's chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> I think that as gospel. Thank much you. to my much to my chagrin. <laughs> so you yeah. say shig chagrin? Uh, yeah, this office is a forty five minute forty five minute drive west of where I live. When you use the word chagrin falls, you're really being making a comment. No, it's just the name of the town. But it's it's, it's an Indian it's an, an Indian name. Chagrin. Chagrin. Well, how did you say it was pronounced, Paula? Chagrin. Oh, but okay. I, All right. I, uh, since I moved here, I, th there's some really strange pronunciations. Like there's yeah. there's a, a major road, and it's 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 G H E N T road. Now, how would you pronounce that? Well, I yeah. didn't hear that. Say yeah. G H E N T. Yeah. Yeah. No, they pronounce it Jen. I, you know, I have no idea why. <laughs> it's the name of a city in Austria, is it? Or yeah, yeah. Or somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting chagrined by this entire <laughs> <laughs> wait, what was uh, three thousand people just tuned out of the show? <laughs> I got I got word from I got word from the engineering the engineer. <laughs> Hello to Mandy who has just joined us. Hi. And and what are you <laughs> lying down in bed or something? Is that what it is, Brian? I'm next to Marjorie. <laughs> <laughs> You're what? I'm next to Marjorie. You've been fed with Marjorie. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. I maybe you always <laughs> calls us from our bed. <laughs> I thought maybe you were in the hospital ele electrocuted because you didn't want the shark to get you. No, <laughs> no. But anyway, you know, 
Alex, I'm surprised your uh, your ears weren't burning on Saturday night. I met a couple of people that you know. First is uh, uh, what the hell's his name? Uh, Curtis <laughs> Martini. Curtis D. Martini. Which one is he? Can I only show you, Len? <laughs> really, Curtis D. Martini. There we go, D. Martini. Okay, uh, he doesn't look like he used to. Oh, and then <laughs> and then of course. You're, He's you're, you're one of your favorite people in the world. Oh, there Larry Bubbles Brown. Brown. There he is. <laughs> so where were you? What comedy uh, it, were you at? Yeah, it was a little <laughs> 17 people <laughs> in, in Pleasanton. That? In Pleasanton, California. So Pleasanton, California. Okay. It was just a very small venue, and it was like, but I spent a half an hour talking to those guys, and they we we talked about you a lot. <laughs> well, I, I love Bubs. Bubs really wants me to come out, you know. He does. He does. He, we, I will he actually, I will drive you everywhere. I will he escort actually you everywhere. To me, he said he said I should talk you into it. <laughs> well, I mean, he wants me to do a reunion show. Mm. And so does Curtis. Curtis, we talked about that too. He said, just sit you down on a stage somewhere like it's a radio show and do, you know, just do your old thing, but but have real comedians or whatever on. I love the idea. I'd go to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I would do it. The only thing is, I got to get out there first. Well, exactly. get out here. They have airplanes now. And, <laughs> you know, I uh, of course you said you'd drive us around, right? I will drive you everywhere yeah. in my we'll beautiful new car. Too. Everything. Yes. You don't want to get in his shitty car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can get a charge out of it. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we'll we'll, that's we'll drive you around. Isn't it that Cadillac? Oh, yeah. It's a big SUV. It's big. Yeah. Oh, it's an SUV. Well, it's, I don't know what it's called. I never thought when I was growing up as a kid that they would make an SUV Cadillac. Right. Cadillac always made like, you know, really expensive cars. Yeah, mm -hmm. They didn't make station wagons, which is essentially what an SUV is. It's it's a modern day station wagon, isn't it? Yep, yep, definitely. Yeah, yeah but they never would think of making a station wagon. They were the big fancy schmancy company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they're doing SUVs because that's what people are buying. <laughs> yeah, they're not buying normal cars anymore, right? Not as yeah. much. I don't know. What would I want? Would you, Marjorie, if we had to get a car tomorrow, what kind would you want? I would get a station wagon so you can haul things. They don't make station wagons anymore. <laughs> of course they do. No, they don't. They don't call Very them. few. Very it's few. When did they stop making them? Mercedes still <laughs> makes one, I think. Well, something like that. Station wagons, if you go back to the original station wagons, they were the, the, Body was made out of wood. Mm. Uh, at Woody's. And why do they call them station wagons? Because you go pick people up at the uh, train yeah. station with it or something? Yeah, I have room to carry yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, uh, how many here, well, because you guys have cars. How many here have SUVs? Really? Yeah. Really? My, my, my. I'm, I'm looking at my one. one. Paula, what do you have? Um, I have like I guess you could call it a modified modified SUV. It's it's a uh, what they call an R. <clears throat> forget it, right? R, R R H V or something. It's, it's a Honda, but it's like a smaller. Oh, one. The HRV. HRV. Yeah, HRV. HRV. Right, right, right. HRV. As opposed to a CRV or whatever the heck else. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah my okay. wife has one of those. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid I can't. Don't know how to drive anymore. But probably mm -hmm. if I got in a car tomorrow, I could immediately drive it, you know. Although their whole, you know, the first time I had a problem was when I first car I got into that I had to push a button to start it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's you, those, turn that's those you don't even push a like button. They don't have any where you just turn a key anymore, do they? No, and, and Tesla's you don't even push a button. Tesla, you just get in it and you push this little the arm, you know, the, the look like the turn signal thingy. To go into different gears, yeah. You say computer drive me, nice. right? You, yeah. yeah. Chevy, Chevy's new electric. You turn it on by touching the brake pedal. Mm. Mm -hmm. You touch the brake pedal and it starts. Yeah, 
Okay, so how about on uh, so your Tesla then? How does it know it's you because you had the key to get in, or because uh, it, there's some yeah. facial recognition or something? The key, the key. If well, you don't have if you don't have the key or or the app, then they have a card. It's like a credit card. So it's not really a key; it's a credit card. Mm -hmm. It's a card that they do that they have a. a it, it assumes that once you got in the car, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, there's an RFID chip in the in the credit mm -hmm. card that, that tells yeah. it matches to the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you use that to get into the car. And then once you're in the car, the car says, Hey, I know it's you. I'm yeah. not gonna, it's I'm no not different than a key fob, except that it's to put one. another key in the door. And the right. Yeah, most cars, when you get in and have the push button, it recognizes the key fob, which has an RFID chip in it. The credit card is the same thing, it's just fits in your wallet. Oh, you wait, wait, to... Back up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I went. I remember years ago, I rented a car in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I got in the car, and as I was driving down, I think it was Santa Monica Boulevard, the car just stopped. Mm. It wouldn't go. It was dead. And was it, it a, was it a Yugo? That I was used to cars being dead where they'd sputter and die. It just, no more. So I called up the uh, rental company, and they came out, and they went, oh, the computer's out. <laughs> yeah. What? That was the first time I realized that, really, they put so much into these cars that there's more to go wrong than ever went wrong before. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've gotten a lot better. They have? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they have all the driverless cars. They're still having problems with those, but mine has all the super cruise, so I can, right when I'm in open area in my commute, I just push a button and it drives. I flip the turn signal, it'll change lanes for me, everything. Really? Are Now, as a driver, are you afraid of that? Well, I'm, I'm watching. I'm not like, I saw a guy when I passed him on the Tesla, he was texting. So I don't do that. I keep my eyes on and like getting ready, but you get more comfortable with it. I'm more I'm more concerned about people cutting into my lane when they don't need to and stuff like that. Because on the uh, on uh, 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 what do you call YouTube, there are a lot of videos of Tesla's self driving. Mm, yeah, there's. So we walked out of Target, and there's three kids standing there, three younger guys standing there. And I'm talking to I'm talking to my friend, and then all of a sudden this car pulls up, and so we stop because you know these kids were getting in it, and there are two kids that got in the front seats. You know, one guy got in the drivers, one in the passenger, and one in the back. So they have a valet service, Tesla does, so that you could it's parked and push a button and it'll back up and come pick you up at the front of the store. Mm -hmm. Even with nobody in the car. Nobody in the car. Yeah, this was, uh, and this was like three years ago. This wasn't like mm -hmm. lately. Yeah, I'm sure if you Google that, you'll see the valet service well, for a Tesla. The, these videos they had were going up and down San Francisco streets, which I know very well. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know knew when it went past by certain things. And I'm going, but, I, you know, gee, I don't know if I could do this, you know? I mean, I'd like to because I don't think I can drive anymore, and it's nice to know the car can, you know? But what's what is this going to do to drivers after a while? Are they going to lose their ability to drive? The same thing Airbus did to pilots it makes them lazy. Well, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, you know that's exactly I mean, what it is. I'd love to have a car that I say take me uh, up to, you know. When I get in a car now that doesn't have all the shit with the the, bl the blind spot detectors and all that <laughs> stuff, I'm a lazy driver. I don't want to turn my head. I got a goddamn yeah. camera. I don't need any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it makes you lazy. What's the downside of this, or what's the upside? Is it safer? Maybe. Wow. But but if you get in an older car, it's not good. It's not yeah. good. Yeah, you, have, you have a generation of kids that can't drive a stick shift. Yeah, oh, yeah for sure. That's a perfect anti-theft device. You know, I was yeah. watching I was watching a TV show the other day from the fifth from the fifties called the Edsel Show. It was a show they did because they just put out the Edsel Ford, mm -hmm. and they had all these commercials for it. And I'm looking at it, and I'm going, 
they you know they had the actual shift change in on buttons on the uh, hub, mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. steering wheel yep and that was electronic by the way it wasn't uh, mechanical right. I'm, I'm, am i right about that uh well, right? I, I think so yeah well it it it, it triggered relays it wasn't it mm-hmm. wasn't yeah. uh, it didn't have a uh, an onboard plc that, that that recognized the signals well that was the first time that i ever came into contact with any kind of electronics in a car yep well our car <laughs> has certain safety issues that are very good and mm. you know, and uh with our car if pam is driving it and all of a sudden Holes in front of us from the other side, the car will stop itself. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Let's slow it down officially, maybe even turn it away because the cars turn. You know how the roads are electronically now? Mm-hmm. They're all printed roads. So that means that while the car is driving, to be within the lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's the systems. I don't know if you've seen this, Alex, but it, it mimics as if there's a view from over on top of your car. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it it has cameras all around and it creates an image mm-hmm. so you can look on the screen and you can see all around your car what's behind <clears throat> you, what's next to you, as if as if you had a a, a drone mm-hmm. flying over your car. It gives you that well, view. Am I wrong yeah. about this? But I read the Tesla has something like fourteen cameras in it. Oh yeah. They're well, in, buy, yeah, you, you own a Tesla. They they have they have the cameras right. like like uh, like uh, Andrew's saying they have the cameras under under the side mirrors. So those are facing down. They have in the pillar. There's another there's another camera. Right. Then they have the sensors and the cameras all around. So like like Andrew says, yeah, you look like you're coming from. It's coming from above. So when I first it's saw a, that, I, I was like walking around trying to figure out where the cameras. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a panoramic it's view. It's incredible. Yeah, my my McLaren has one has that now too. But, uh, but does, do all the Teslas have the cameras? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So by the use of cameras, they're able to then drive the car. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because oh, the they're not radar. just cameras. They're the radar sensors and and they pulse and. Like a bat can can you know tell the distance I mean, between things. Think maybe they're more accurate than you are. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Uh, but they're on, they're uh, on uh, uh, Vernon. You're muted, Vernon. You're muted, Vernon. I'm driving a 2021 Hyundai Ionic, and mm. it has mm. it has the capability of self driving, but it does not encourage that because when I drive on a, on an interstate highway, if everything's fine. I can let go of the wheel and the car will steer itself on the on the interstate, et cetera. But if you leave your hands off the wheel for more than 15 seconds, it disengages the um, mm-hmm. the driving, uh, what do you call it, the autopilot. It disengages mm-hmm. that and the screen pops up and says, put your hands back on the wheel. Yeah, wow. I think te- so Tesla's words- sort of like that because I drove a Tesla Plaid and that one, yeah, I had to have my hands on the wheel also. Um, but then mine mine has Super Cruise and Super Cruise does not. Super Cruise has the commercial where the guy lets his hands off and they're all doing the I mean, we are the champions clap. Yeah. Now Brian is a car fan. Obviously, he's willing to pay for it. Uh he has a Cadillac. What do you have? A Cadillac, a McLaren? Yeah, some things. Yeah. Couple cars. What else? What else? What are the other cars? Oh, my 1934 Cadillac has no safety features. Yeah. No, <laughs> no features at all. But oh, wait a minute, Charlene. I was just going to tell Brian. I have never heard of a McLaren. Never until you. And yesterday <laughs> we're driving down 580 from Dublin to, to Castor Valley, and guess what I saw? A McLaren. <laughs> I had never even heard of it or seen it. I thought of you. I was like, I wonder if that's Brian. <laughs> no, no, yes. Well, there, are only, there are only three in this country, and they're all owned by Brian. Yeah, <laughs> no. two of them are. There's, two of them are. There's, there's several. You, Brian, though, you you've you've had a te- you have a Tesla. She has a Tesla. She has <laughs> she has the Tesla. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We're we're uh, we're, we're in but a yeah. state. Yes, of, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Yes. Is there any chance that's going to get back together? Why would you ask that? What do you mean? <laughs> why? 
I want to. Because it's none of your business, Alex. (laughs) What? It's none of your business. Okay. It's none of my business. Is it none of my business, Brian? I'll message you later. Oh, okay. (laughs) I was going to say, send him a DM and let him tell you. I I mean, we'd like to, you know. Yeah, right, Mandy. Yeah. Mandy and I say it's none of your business, okay? No, (laughs) I just said send it. (laughs) (laughs) We don't need boyfriend and girlfriend uh, relationship stuff on here, that's all. (laughs) Well, relationships suck. Of course, yeah. I don't don't mind talking about mine. You can ask me about mine. Oh, really? Okay, (laughs) let's go. Let's line them up. Who wants to start? I'm going to ask you about yours. Well, you guys have actually even seen him. His name is Henry. Walked through here before. I don't know much about yours, but from what everything I can ascertain, it's going pretty well. Yes. Uh-huh. You posted oh, a picture yeah. of him somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's not going as badly as Brian's. <laughs> 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 then again, I'm married, and you know who I'm married to. My relationship isn't as bad as Brian's. <laughs> no relationship. Well, uh, I think I think that relationship but, might be over. What? I so okay, I think that relationship. Subject, hey, how about how's yeah. that Trump guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, what's your shirt say today? <laughs> hey, it's Jeff's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Jeff. Oh, happy birthday, Jeff. Happy birthday, Jeff. Happy birthday, Jeff. Already what? Doesn't mean I'm ready to do things. I'm awake. Um, doesn't mean I'm ready to do things. <laughs> Especially if I haven't had my coffee yet. Yeah. Oh, did you definitely? Did you see there's 500,000 Haitians in Florida who were polled and 85 or 86 percent of them have said they no longer would vote for the orange menace and they oh. all have families. Oh. These are all legal legal citizens who've, who've been in the country for years, a massive community, and now Florida's in play. Mm-hmm. I think slowly, yeah. I mean, we don't talk, talk politics much here. Uh, I'm, in fact, I, I'm thinking about uh, voting for Trump, so I'll be the one <laughs> you know, uh, at, the, at the rate things are going. But it, it, uh, is going it, it, it it's uh, he's alienating a lot of people. I mean, you know, I don't know I'm if you've heard, but he's really not a good guy. What? I don't know <laughs> if you've heard, but he's just not a good guy. <laughs> yeah. I just well, saw a, I just saw a commercial uh, uh, um, narrated by Sam Elliott with that beautiful voice that he has, that bass mm-hmm. voice. Anybody seen it? No, I don't mm-hmm. think that was really his voice. <laughs> I, I've heard, I saw the ad. I think it was someone imitating. It's a great. His, it's his a great ad. It's a great. Brilliant. Ad. It's and and it ends up saying "Man up, vote for a woman." It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've seen it. Well, I posted and made sure everybody knew it was a lie that the maid at the hotel that both Trump and Laura Loomer were in found the Plan B box empty <laughs> yeah. in her trash can. <laughs> and, then the, and then and then the next day, Laura Loomer denied it and said it's it's impossible because the little blue pill didn't work. And then Trump denied that, saying that's that's, that's insanity because yeah. at the end of the day, Cialis is not Okay. <laughs> I can make up rumors just like they can. By the way, anybody watching, I made it up. It's fake. It's believable. <laughs> and I was just asking questions. Oh, oh boy. I mean, do you on the formatting issues? This- I'll be glad when this year is over. <laughs> Me too. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. you, we're going to Europe on uh, the 7th of November, and it might not be over yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Certainly will not be if they have to hand out count the there. ballots in Georgia. Once and election season's over, Trump wins. We're just not coming back. As soon as mm. election season's yeah. over, we get into denial season, which will be fun. Yeah, I hear Mark Robinson has several openings in his campaign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, I mean, it's just crazy. But you know, a lot of it is too. The craziness is caused by the fact that our communication has changed, or the parameters mm-hmm. of it have changed. And so the the when you have a rumor like you know patients eating cats and dogs, that's only just amplified by the internet, you know, and uh, and there's nothing to stop that kind of amplification. We were watching a show. What was it? A show called 
Douglas gets censored or gets fired, or I can't remember the last word, a uh, title on it. It's an English show, which will probably wind up over here. <clears throat> uh, it's starring the guy who was the uh, star of Downton Abbey and Karen Gillan, who was uh, one of Doctor Who's best uh, 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 companions. And uh, it's all about this guy who goes to a party. He goes to a wedding. And there's a rumor that goes out on uh, uh, Twitter about him telling an off-kilter joke or something, something that was not right. And it only had like 1,200 followers. Well, by the time the day was over, a million people had seen it. Hmm. And then, you know, by uh, then later on that day, another... It winds up like 20, 30 million people had seen this thing. And now his job is in jeopardy for a joke he can't even remember telling, and they can't tell you what he said. <laughs> so that's what we've got. It, it really is a great comment on, on the use of social media today and how things can spread like wildfire and not be true. Yeah, people are worried about AI screwing up our lives. I think we're screwing up our own lives. I don't think we have to worry about exactly. AI doing it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. People yeah. worry about AI screwing up our lives, and we're doing it all ourselves. But yeah. AI, AI is making it easier to do that. It making it's making easier. A new layer, it's a new layer to create the, the fake. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I of course, am, am the guy who all my life waited for the modern, for modern times, you know, uh, I was living on the edge of it. I was born on the edge of it. But then all of a sudden, everything started getting very modern. And now I look out my window in New York. It looks like the city of the future you used to look in drawings, mm -hmm. you know. And and we have computers. And I can look, all of you are how many different places in the United States right now? Yeah. And you could even be in uh, Malaysia, like one of my callers at night is, and and get a perfect picture. This is a better, you know, I mean, just a few years ago, we did a show. Uh, uh, we were doing t shows on the Internet with a thing called Play Incorporated. And we had a show coming out of uh, out of uh, Canada with a guy named Revelstoke Jim. And we barely could get a fuzzy picture out of him. And mm -hmm. today... You could be in England right now and look as good as anybody else on this panel. So uh, we're living in that future I always dreamed about, you know? And the fact that I'm sitting here talking to all of you is is amazing. Um, but is it good? Is what I wanted for the future good? Or is it that our implementation of it is so terrible that human beings... Mm -hmm really shouldn't have this kind of technology. Jeff, you raised your hand. You're on mute. You're muted. You're muted. Unmute. Unmute. There he is. There you go. Oh, you you oh, had oh, a no, 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 joke. Do it again. Watch no, once. Unmute, Jeff. You did still muted muted. yourself again. There, there, you go. there we go. Oh, there, you're fine now. Thanks, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what I want to say. So I think a lot of things that are being manufactured, uh, assembled, designed, jobs that people have today are being reduced because computers are taking over more and more pieces of their jobs. Today, you know, this is not something that well, nobody, no, you know, nobody, years. none of these, you know, none of these candidates are att uh, attending to that particular question, Jeff. No, about the fact that people are being replaced by computers. There's no question about it, you know, and a company doesn't care about their employees. They never have. They never will. And when they can replace employees and replace them with a computer, or they can become just as efficient with a computer as they do with employees, 
goodbye employee. Yeah, well, don't don't forget in that equation, it's not just computers, it's robotics, it's automation, it's well, processes. You know, it's it's we've always looked for efficiencies to reduce reduce labor. And most of the time when that happens, it creates additional benefit and more jobs in terms of sales and, and marketing and some of the things that can't be automated. Now with AI, a lot of these creative functions like marketing are are now at, at a threat. Because you could you can go onto one of these chat programs and say, give me a marketing pitch for a product with these values, and it will pitch one out that you could then just edit and use and not have to go after a high dollar marketing firm. So, you know what's you know, amazing to me? There was a time when I had a problem. I just went online and there was a phone number to call, and I called the phone number. All right? Not now. Try and find the number. Try and find it. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. There is no phone number. And then if, oh, you could do the chat with the person. Yep. The chat is a bot. Yeah. Usually. Just answer your question for what the bot has already learned. And if you say, let me talk to a human being, it doesn't reply. I, mm -hmm. I don't have a phone on my desk. Where did oh. you Brian, Brian's gone? I was going to ask him. I don't think he does either. But no, yeah, most offices have gotten rid of him now. Yeah, there's no, I don't have phone. None of my employees here have phones on their desk. They can they can get a call through Google, whatever, on their computer if, if somebody yeah. calls. But yeah. we don't, we don't you know, have we, desk phones. We lost, we lost uh, Brian, I think. Brian, but I would like to ask him about that at his, at his work. You know, does he actually have a phone? Well, I've seen him on the phone. But it's his cell phone. It's his mobile, yeah. yeah. It's his mobile. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't count. Yeah. I still have a teletype, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a fax machine? No. No. <laughs> well, we've been trying to get a hold of our lawyer. I write him letters. He never writes back, but that's par for the course for lawyers. They never learned how to write letters. Uh, and uh, Marjorie calls today. Uh, I want to make a. I want to have an appointment with with a lawyer. I want to talk to him. We will have to talk to him. We want to do a voice thing. What happened, Marjorie? She sent me over the voicemail. <laughs> wow. I mean, he is wow. answering my letters. I doubt if he's going to answer that. Well, yeah, because he'll 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 bill you if he writes you a letter. I don't care. I'm lousy with money right now. Just answer my goddamn mail. You know? I mean, he already got $130,000 off of us. And this yeah. is part of that same problem. So, you know, for 130 bucks, I guess, doesn't matter, huh? I'd have done it for 129 You should have called me. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time I'll call you. But yeah. just remember, I'm, I only play a lawyer on TV. Probably get us better results. Okay. <laughs> at least faster. What? At least faster. At least yeah. faster. At least he'll answer my calls. Right? I get you. I get you results. Maybe not the ones you want, but I'll get results. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I uh, I could. I could do a lot of what I want him to do, but I want him to do it because he's the lawyer. Mm -hmm. He carries more weight than if I do it. I could write a letter to the landlord and say, you can't do this, blah, 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 blah. Here are the reasons why. And it's not going to have the same weight as my lawyer phoning up and saying, listen, we're going to sue for harassment. This is getting ridiculous, you know? So, I mean, I, you know, but... All this modernization has, it, we were talking about people losing jobs over it, you know? So all these good things that I saw in the future where life would be better for everyone has not turned out to be true, you know? It's just wonderful for the people who run the computers, and that's it. I think it's funny some of the products that have web enablement that I can't quite understand why you would want it. I think we talked about like dishwashers. I, we just I, got a a, a Wi-Fi enabled dishwasher. Yeah. Which I but the installer said you can turn this thing on from Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to? 
And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, but how do I put the dishes in there? <laughs> there's, I, I, on Facebook, there's all constant ads for crazy products. And just the other day, I saw one for adult toys that, that work by Bluetooth so that you can, you can control your partner's adult toy. Oh my god! Well, that yeah. might be nice because you could be on the phone and doing phone sex, and then yeah, her vibrator yeah. or something. Yeah, well, may maybe what they meant by turn on your dishwasher is you go, "Hey, baby, how you doing?" You know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, our di it, first tell of me all, something. Dishwasher. Tell me something dirty. I'll wash it. <laughs> the dishwasher has to be on. There has to is a power switch. It has to be on in order for the Wi-Fi to work. Jesus. Now you 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 got to load the dishes in there. Yeah. You know, there's no Wi-Fi for loading the dishes. Right. So as long as you've loaded the dishes and they're in there, and you put the little soap thing in there, and it's in there, what do you want to do? Close it shut and then go to London to turn it on? <laughs> you want to leave the house so you can't hear it? I don't know, but it it doesn't make. There's so many of those those products that that just doesn't make sense why you would want right. Wi-Fi. I have, an oven. I have an oven that yeah. I can turn on the Wi-Fi. And even if I don't turn on the Wi-Fi, it keeps nagging me to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> My email. Did you At put a ring on turn... it? Huh? Did you put a ring on it? <laughs> you can start. You can be coming home from work and you want to start the oven so you can throw your food in when you get home. That makes a mm -hmm. little bit of yeah. sense. Oh, <laughs> that's nice that it tells me I need to turn it on. Yeah, I need to, you know, do whatever to. The only thing we've got that is Wi-Fi enabled that we use and that is useful is the air conditioner. Yep. yep. I can operate the whole air conditioner from my phone, turn it up, turn it down, turn yep. it on, turn it off. I, well, so we can I turn, turn on it the lamps, Alex. What? Can turn on the lamps anywhere. Well, no, but then forget about that. We're, we're dealing with appliances right now. Yeah. And, I've got one of those. And what I can do is I can, uh, you know, I can turn it off, go out to dinner, do whatever I'm going to do and whatever. And then I want the room cold by the time I get home. As I'm yeah. on my way home, I just push a button and it turns the air conditioner on. I can be in London and it will turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got one of those ring doorbells on Saturday. I was able to tell a Jehovah's Witness to F off when I was at, uh, at Lowe's. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, I literally said to the guy, I'm not I home, I'm at Lowe's, you. and if you don't leave my porch, I'm going to buy a weapon from here on the shelf and bring it and show you. <laughs> After I say what I'm about to say, none of you will have any respect for me. The reason I bought this particular dishwasher was it had Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have no idea what we could possibly use the Wi-Fi for. You know, you turn on the dishes from another room. That's always nice. You know, it just, I, I, I don't understand it either. Uh, at Home Depot, at Home Depot, we're selling refrigerators with these big uh, LED screens on them. Yep. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen those. You, they have and scans. One of, and one of the things you can do is you can look inside without opening the door and see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Is it, a, is it, is it, the, it's transparent or it has a camera? Yeah. It has a camera. Um, yeah, there's, so there's that ones mean you could you, be at, could you, you can be at the store? Also, watch Netflix while you're making dinner. You can but could you Netflix. be at the store and look and see what's in your refrigerator and see if you have milk or not? Can you do yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that that of course that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. The Alexa enabled ones you can you can scan all of your stuff into the fridge and when you take it out you scan it and it makes a shopping list for you. Mm hmm. Which, again, come on, who needs it? <laughs> It's more yeah. work than writing on a piece of paper. Now, like like Lynn said, we're making ourselves so damn lazy. Yeah. Well, you you remember that movie? Uh, what was the robot? The robot? What was his name? Uh, How? Huh? How? No, the other one. <laughs> the other one. Uh, Wall E. Wall, Wall E. Yeah. Wall E. And all the people are on this cruise ship, but they're all fat and they can't get out of the chairs in the cruise yeah. ship because it just becomes so lazy. Uh, that, I thought it was just because they were American. The future. I see that yeah. as the future. You know. I do too. Yeah. Hell, I you know I have to work out every day for PT. 
And the easiest way to work out for PT is I just go on to the thing where I have to put in what I did today and just say I did it. <laughs> How's my PT person going to know I didn't do it? Because you're Definitely. broadcasting it on the internet. There you oh, go. <laughs> and they've got your camera looking at what you're doing. He's listening. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, I, I, I should ask uh, Francine, how's everything going? Because she lives in the same island I do. Yeah, I was on uh, jury duty uh, oh. the last couple of days. I almost got picked, and I would have been there today. So, um, fortunately, that was that was good. You and to, you have to go back two days, right? I, I was there. I went Thursday, and... They said, well, there are no cases, so you probably just have to sit here. And at about 2.30, they said, oh, we have a case. They picked about 30 names. Mine was one of them. So I had to go to uh, what they call voir dire, yeah. uh, where they interview you. And, um, you know, I was, like, so close, but I guess they just, in the end, didn't choose me. But uh, I was, you know, I was, I was like, in my mind, kind of mentally prepared for it. But what I thought was really interesting was that they were telling us the things that you can't get, you can't do jury duty for. And if you're a convicted felon, you can't do jury duty. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I thought was, well, it just kind of speaks for itself, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You don't have to be jury convicted duty or jury of a duty. felony or something. Why shouldn't you be on jury duty? You you know the law, right? You can run for president, though. <laughs> so, you can run for president. Yeah. That's, I thought that was so weird. You know, you can't do jury duty, but you can run for president. So, yeah, that that should be another. Uh, true. We, we need yeah, another right. amendment that says, you know, you can't be a convicted felon. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It makes sense. Something. I mean, what, yeah. what American, what American would vote for a felon who's running for president? It doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, well, <laughs> I lived in Louisiana for a short period of time back in the '80s, and hmm. they elected a was it a sheriff or something that was in jail? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, well, I remember years ago that. 1950, I think it was, it was a guy running in Florida who, who won the election against Claude Pepper by accusing him of having a wife that was a known thespian and he was a homo sapien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be here all week? <laughs> no, that's not a joke. I'm not making that no, up. No, he's that serious. Way. Yeah. Guy. There was, I can't think of the guy's name. Is um, that, Smethers, that's Smethers or something like that. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. Accused his wife of being a thespian. How disgusting! Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, 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 I, you know, I, I went to uh, what do you call it? jury duty, and I, what I hate about it, first of all, you're sitting there all day. It's yeah. so boring. Yeah. And then they call you for voir dire or whatever, and they took me in. Now let me explain to you. I was in the same jury pool with Steven Soderbergh, the movie director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, we went into Vaudure together, right? And he got up and told the judge that he couldn't do jury duty because he had a okay from the State Department to go to Cuba and make a movie, <laughs> and that he had to be there on the on the dates that you know that he was supposed to be there to make the movie. It was the movie Che, that, if you remember, he did. And so I get up and I say, I can't possibly sit on this jury because, quite frankly, it's a drug case and I don't believe drugs should be illegal. It's a medical problem. And the judge went, next, you know, <laughs> I don't want you on my jury. And Soderbergh looks at me and goes, boy, that's a flimsy excuse. <laughs> I look back at him and I said, yours wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my uh, my Soderbergh story. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, you know, I mean, we're coming up. How many days do we have till the election? Forty-eight. Much. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I, I can, I, it's going to be wonderful to see what, what happens to MSNBC once this whole thing is over. They'll have nothing to talk about. Yeah. Uh. I, I say to Marjorie when she's watching it, why are you, right, Marjorie? I ask you why you're watching this crap. You know, it's just one hour after another, it's just Trump bash, Trump bash, Trump bash, Trump bash. And while I'm all for not liking Trump, I mean, come on, there's other news. What what news story did we see the other day that did, wasn't reported by anybody? Marjorie, remember we were watching, we I don't know. went over to some news outfit that literally was running a story we didn't see anywhere else. And it was an important story. Not I so I remembered it. I lost my money. I invested in Lebanese pagers. <laughs> thing just blew up on me. You know, I was waiting for somebody to do to, to say something about that. You know, I'm, I'm about not, our future I'm not against Israel and what's going on. It's not about it's Israel. Not. It's about it's about the ability to 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 blow yeah. something up from a page. Right. Right. These right. might blow up. I'm really not. You know, I really don't like what Israel's been doing and how they've been handling Gaza oh, and, the politics and, and all of that. But I got to hand it to him with that pager deal. <laughs> you know, in spite of the fact that I think it's inhumane and all those things, it's something purely out of James Bond, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's the yeah. long game. They yeah, they I, had a relationship with because the Taiwanese people uh, don't don't like the Middle East. Uh, uh, the the Hezbollah and those guys because of their their connections with China. So when they went to the factories in Taiwan to implant all of these batteries, they were on board. They, they really? were they, were they were implanted pleased. in Taiwan. The, the batteries were designed in Israel, implanted in the pagers in Taiwan, and shipped to the the importers. And the only people in the Middle East who carry pagers carry them because they can't be tracked like cell phones. Yeah. So once, once, and they had they had tracking chips, and they knew where those things were. And when they they thought they were going to get the most, they they hit send. Mm. I mean, it's it, it's insidious how how and how clever they were. No, I mean it's 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 great. I mean, it's just uh, uh, genius. Okay. The next day, the next day, they blew up their walkie talkies. Next yeah. day, they blew up yeah. walkie talkies. And and I, I heard they're going to blow up all the Bluetooth adult toys too. Yeah. Now, if we look, Mandy is now going. She's left her office. Yeah. She's going to her car and she's going to drive off to a what a gym? Do you do it in a gym? And and make people healthier than she is. So hmm. it's good. If I were to Yeah, but I don't think anybody's coming to my class. I've gotten like two texts since we've been on this call that says I can't come. Wow. So you don't know if anybody's going to be there? Well, I mean, there might be a couple of people there, but, like, some people are texting me and saying I can't come. Yeah. That's okay. I'll still work out. Well, by the way, I want to thank all you people for doing this every week. Last week, we had a record number of people watching it. Wow. Beats any we're doing. It, I could do a whole week of the night show, and it wouldn't equal the amount of the people that watch you guys every week now. What was the number? I just... Huh? What was the number? How many were watching? Three. We got up to three? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Used to be two. I hear Andrew has a full no, line of what time get, Don Gilbert Every week it seems to get better and better. Last week it was somewhere around, it was approaching a thousand. The, 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 current, the current count right now as we're live is 66. <clears throat> 66 people. Yeah, that playing. thing, as we're going, you can't figure it out when it's over. Uh, that number that number swelled to over 700 i think last week wow you know when i was with the uh, bubs and and uh the other night this woman came up and was talking to them and and then she looks at me she goes why do i know you from somewhere and i'm like eh, monday <laughs> goes, oh yeah that's awesome <laughs> I've, I've gotten a few this. creepy i've gotten a few creepy dms on facebook that i don't oh me to. too <laughs> All the time, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. get me started. Well, most of them are from Lynn. I'm getting. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mandy. I'll stop. <laughs> I, I'm getting in my 2010 CRV that I have to drive myself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. Well, let's see you drive. No, I, I wish I. I wish I could get somebody to drive it for me. 
<laughs> in this town. Oh my gosh. There we go. There goes the seat belt. You know, as a, as a kid from the uh, who was born in 1939, I don't put my seat belt on as fast as most people do. I mean, kids today, they just get in a car, you put on the seat belt, right? Yeah, of course. And uh, if I get in a passenger seat, I forget to put on a seat belt until, of course, the car nags you yeah. or, to put on the seat belt. But it's just because I was never trained to use a seat belt. In fact, the first seat belts I got were the ones that were just across your bottom, mm -hmm. which they found in automobiles, people were being cut in half yeah. by those seat belts. So then they went to the straps, and the straps are great. You know, they're terrific. Straps. You, you would do it automatically if you didn't live in New York. No, uh, not the first yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't drive it or, or uh, you're, you're not called upon to do that. But, you know, it's automatic for a lot of us. A person who joined our panel just now is someone who do you you don't have a car, do you, Don? Um, those are those those things in the middle of the road that I dodge. Yeah. <laughs> You want to dodge? They're they're bigger <laughs> than bicycles. Mm. But you don't have one, right? Last time I drove was in 1979. Yeah. Really? Alex, your phone is ringing. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's me. I'm going to be late today. <laughs> it does, it, what is it? Is it? Uh, well, it was a call from somebody. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Huh? Thank goodness. <laughs> Everything rings. My my arm rings. My phone rings. The computer rings. Bye bye. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, it's ringing again. I can hear it, but it's not ringing here. So, be very important. Get yeah, a caller ID. Maybe you have to answer all those phones. Anyway. Uh, do you have caller ID? What? Do you yeah. have caller ID? Do you know who's calling? It, it, no, it just it just didn't say what, who it was. Is it touch tone or, or a dial phone? <laughs> did, it say, did it say potential spam? No. You know, Alex, I remember listening to your show. It was that overnight show back on when you were on PLJ. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of when I listened to you. And I remember you talking about caller ID for the first time, how much you mm -hmm. didn't like it. You thought it was really like, I don't want to know who's calling me. You know, <laughs> I don't want someone to know that I'm calling them. I remember that so clearly. Oh, well, you, I, you know something? I have this best friend who calls me constantly. And I look down, I see his name, and I don't take the call. I, his name is Thank Steve. you. 9.9% .9 of the calls I get stay spam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's nice having a best friend like spam. Right. And why did they name that after a luncheon meet? Because it's not good for you. Yeah. Is it? Does anybody prove that spam isn't good for you? Because um, yes, it's loaded up with salt. Yeah. Well, I heard the problem with it is it's uh, actually it's uh, 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 sperm and ham. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they gave it that name. Yeah. So what's new with you, Giller? Mm. Hang on, I, I I got a I got a page a pager thing here. <laughs> <laughs> oh is, 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 that, is that from Lebanon? <laughs> <laughs> I have Le Lebanon, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Giller, when are you and I? This is a good question to ask. Watch. When are you and I getting together for lunch? Uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Did I say something bad? Restaurants aren't <laughs> open then. <laughs> Chinese restaurants are. <laughs> I, don't you have some kind of like. Uh, Oh, I don't know. Little eatery by you. Okay. This is a discussion he just what doesn't want to get into. No. no, there are many discussions I don't want to get into. I mean, yeah. is, the the eating me, is eating with me so disgusting to you that you can't give me a straight answer? Well, that's one reason. 
<laughs> Why am I laughing? I should feel hurt. <laughs> I feel hurt, Don. I I call, but you're not going to pick up. <laughs> Well, because your name is Spam on my phone. <laughs> Call us Pager. Call us Pager, <laughs> right? Tell him it's Alex. Now, I, I, I've been I've been so consumed with uh, researching this this college music professor that uh, I, I I have no other life to talk about. Why are you mm. doing that? I mean, what's your reasoning behind it? Because he was a formative teacher. Mm -hmm. And he was. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. What? Uh, um, he he's worth revealing to a greater public, I think, or to me, he is. Oh, okay. There are generations of students who 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 to them was also their formative teacher. Um, he was just an amazing guy. Uh. He introduced us to music none of us would have been aware of otherwise. Uh, and and I've fallen into so many rabbit holes and, and I'm just I, I I periodically or or frequently get overwhelmed with 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 the amount of stuff that I have to I don't have to but but I want to um, get on top of. Yeah. What kind of music? Um. The guy loved both contemporary music and jazz. He was a uh, um, a close friend of Cecil Taylor. I don't know if you know the name. Yeah. Um, uh, he was also a student of Luigi Dalla Piccola, who was a uh, very famous serial Italian composer, but very lyrical. Uh, yeah, uh, he was an absolutist. He just believed in absolutes. Uh, he was a very smart guy and a very kind guy. Uh, and, where and we all loved him. College in college. Yeah. Um, it's amazing, because you're how old, and that was years ago, and the man still has an influence on you to this day. I I had a, a Zoom call with two people who. Uh, were his students in the late eighties, early nineties, right, right when he was retiring, uh, and one of them told me he he died in ninety seven. Um, and they're they're just as caught up with him as so many others besides me, mm -hmm. and I guess the reason I'm doing this is because no one else is. That's every reason to do it. Yeah. You know? Uh, and, it, and it may have a, an audience of 20 people, 30 people, or, or, or more re realistically, you know, anybody who's in contact with him, but I don't expect it to go beyond that. Um, but I don't care as long as I'm, I'm not only exploring his life, but I'm, I'm exploring his family's life. You know, his, his parents, his grandparents, and even his great grandparents. Um, and just finding out stuff that no one knows or cares about. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, That's amazing. During your time at Antioch? That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, uh, he introduced us to uh, this 15th century composer named Johannes Ockeghem. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, and he inspired me to, to, uh, direct my own choir when I was living in San Francisco and we, 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 we performed around the uh, San Francisco. You directed a choir? Yeah, choir. Wow. Um, yeah. And I taped all this stuff and, and only a few months ago have I dug out all these tapes and, and I've been digitizing them and I've been putting some of them online. Um, I, I think I mentioned on, on uh, Ramble that, that yeah. Uh, yeah. I put the Cecil Taylor concert. That no one even knew existed, um, and that, that's something I recorded. Uh, and again, it, it's not viral; it's gotten two thousand views in the last five months. But that's that's not the point. Well, let me know, and we'll plug it on the ramble, and you'll probably have another two or three listeners. So, 
two and a half. Here's a hoping. Yeah, I've yeah. been with Alex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. It's so getting that uh, that time. <laughs> well, Giller, you only call in the last five minutes anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I I should have called later. Uh, <laughs> It's like the last few minutes on 60 Minutes. It's like you're right at the end of the show. Yeah. Andy Rooney. Yeah, I'm He's here, Andy Rooney. Marjorie, yeah. what's for dinner? Tell them. Tell them. It's a surprise. Tell, no, tell them. It's not a surprise to me. Tell them what we're having. No. <laughs> <laughs> she you can tell me. us. She ordered ravioli mm. from Italy. Ooh. Italy. Italy. Yep. Mm. And then she forgot to order the uh, tiramisu. No, I ordered it. They didn't have it. They didn't they have it? They charged me for it. Oh, okay. They charged you for it? They didn't. Didn't charge you for it. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me ask Charlene. Charlene, what's for dinner? Uh, steak, ribeye. What? Ribeye steak, baked potato. Whoa, oh, I'm gosh. coming over. <laughs> <laughs> anytime. You're, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh and and what are you having for dinner? Uh Charlie? Me? Probably fried chicken. <laughs> okay. We have some leftover from Popeyes here. Yep. Uh, uh let's see here. Oh, uh, uh what are you having for dinner? Uh, uh uh Len? Uh I believe it's rockfish. Rockfish. <laughs> Rockfish. Oh, very good. Very Go good. <laughs> how about you, Andrew? How about how, what are you having for dinner? Well, I was driving this weekend, so I've got some uh, some Haitian hot dogs from Springfield to cook up. <laughs> <laughs> they they call them mystery meat. I'm not sure why. <laughs> how about how about you, uh, Francine? Well, I'm just going to eat real fast. I'm having a TV dinner and string beans because I'm going to a poetry reading after this. Mm. They still call them TV dinners. Yeah, lean yeah. cuisine, lean cuisine. Just you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. they, they remember the TV dinners with the with the you know the foil and they all oh, had yeah. loved them. food in each. Swanson's, Boy, Swanson's loved disgusting them. Disgusting dinners. Oh, I love them. <laughs> Salisbury death. Yeah. 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 I decided to start serving them on airplanes. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what are you having for dinner, Paula? Actually, I don't have any idea, but my daughter-in-law is an excellent cook, and whatever mm. she's serving, that's what I'm going to be having. Oh, so you're going to go to dinner there? Yeah. Very yeah. good. We have a that's vegan good. TV Mandy, dinner. what are you program. having for dinner tonight? Well, my sister came over for dinner last night, so and she didn't eat one of her chicken thighs, so I'm going to have her leftover chicken thigh that's got a really good rub on it and salad. Oh, very nice. How about you, Jeff? What's for dinner at your place? Chinese. Uh, birthday dinner. <laughs> birthday Chinese. dinner. Chinese. How about uh, how about you, uh, Vernon? Uh, baked chicken. Baked chicken. See, good Kentucky dinner. Baked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, Don Giller. What are you having for dinner? Uh, I have to check the squirrel. I think it's uh, <laughs> enough. But I I I like them well done. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. And finally. Before he signs us off, I will ask Edward Berger what he's having for dinner. I'm going to have some chicken from the microwave. <laughs> chicken. It's, 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 it's here because I don't know how to cook, so everything has to come out of the microwave. Uh, <laughs> all these years being single and you never taught yourself how to cook. Nope. <laughs> I taught myself how to cook uh, so that I would never be hungry again. Okay, mm -hmm. well, Mike Rourke does, does just as well. Thank you all for <laughs> being here, and thank you. Uh, see you again next week, and it's Edward Berger's time to sign us off by saying... That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Alex. Bye.